That evening, back at the farm, Lois Lane paces around as she waits for any kind of news from the boys. It doesn't feel right. Just sitting there. She should be out with them, looking for Batman. Her phone buzzes a number of times. Each buzz is accompanied with a photo of the fight at the fair. Superman, Superboy, and Robin each doing what they can to stop the strange monster that attacked. She sees the destruction it leaves in its wake. The injured civilians. Lois walks over to the kitchen sink and looks up from her phone to see an orange light flickering in the distance. She immediately knows that it's in the direction of the large oak tree that John likes to hang out at. She squints her eyes and grabs her keys to the family truck. She gets in the vehicle and drives up the hill towards the tree. Once she arrives, she gets out the car without turning off the engine. She just watches as the bark burns, as the leaves dance in the air, most of them burning into ash before they can even reach the grass below. It hasn't stopped, she thinks. It's been one thing after the other. Every time they expect things to just get a little bit back to normal, they're rudely reminded there's no such thing. Because everywhere they turn, someone always seems to want the world to burn. Then, Lois notices the makeshift grave John made for their previous pet, Goldie. Two dried sticks put together to form a cross, hastily fastened together by a small bit of string and Goldie's collar. Small flames ignite on the edges. Lois walks over, blows out the flames, and immediately calls for her husband and son. John? Clark! She waits a moment. Usually, Clark would have answered by now. That's when she sees Mr. Cobbs' farm in the distance. Something isn't adding up. She jumps back into the truck and drives over. It screeches to a halt as she parks, alerting the Cobbses. Kathy and her grandfather open the front door and they step onto the porch. Evening, Mr. Cobbs. Hi, Kathy. Everything okay there, Mrs. Kent? The big oak's on fire. Did you see anyone set it? I haven't seen or heard anything. I was about to head over myself and investigate. Called the fire department too. Where are your boys? I hope they weren't caught up in all that commotion in town. Lois forces a smile. No worries, they're fine, she tells the two before jumping back into her truck. She then drives into town to do some investigating herself. First, she does a rundown on what she knows. Batman and Robin come to the house, worried about John. Batman goes out by himself to dig around. Poof, bats disappeared. The giant squid attacks town. Clark, John, and Damien take it down. Then, not a word from them. Poof, just like Batman, they're gone. And Candace? Lois gasps as she sees Mrs. Candace walking by. But that isn't right. From the pictures Lois was looking at earlier, Mrs. Candace was injured. Pretty badly, in fact. How is she already up and about after that? 
Lois parks the truck on the side of the road and tries to keep a safe distance behind as she follows Mrs. Candace. By the looks of it, she's heading for the town hall. But why is she taking the back door? Lois follows the woman all the way to the lower floors of the building, only to find that the stairs lead a couple stories underground. Lois comes to the conclusion that the historic town hall must have been erected during the Cold War. This stairwell must be leading her to a bomb shelter of some sort. At the base of the stairs sits a single door. Lois gently slides it open and is greeted by the illumination of countless computer monitors. Each of the monitors showcase her and her family at different points in time over the last few months. Her sons, her husbands, even Damien's lives are all on full display. What the? Lois gasped as she approaches the computer. She places her hand on the glass, muttering, Our whole life laid bare. Clark and John? Their secret identities. Suddenly, a voice behind her finishes her statement. Aren't very secret anymore, Lois. Lois takes a closer look at the computer monitor and sees Mrs. Candace pointing a gun at the back of her head. In one motion, Lois turns on her heel and kicks the weapon away before Candace can react. Then, she follows up with a blast of pepper spray to the face. Candace falls to her knees and begins to sob from the pain. She orders Lois to come back, but Lois is already sprinting away. She runs full speed out of the room, up the stairs, out of the town hall, and back to her car. She smashes the keys into the ignition and forces down the pedal as far as she can. The engine roars into the distance as she drives away. Clark! Jonathan! She calls out in desperation. Again, there is no answer. In a situation like this, there is only one thing to do. She has to use it now. The Justice League Emergency Communicator. Lois arrives back at the farm and swings open the front door. Shockingly, there is already a full house. A number of the townspeople are sitting in her front room. Apparently, they have been waiting on her arrival. Doc Brooks, Officer Haggard, Mr. Martinez, Mayor Goodman, even Mrs. Candace is somehow in attendance. Each of them with a sinister smirk on their faces. Hello, Mrs. Kent, Mayor Goodman says slyly as he holds up a small device in the palm of his hand, shaking it from left to right. I imagine you're looking for this. Lois doesn't stop for a second. She races up the staircase before any of the townspeople have a chance to approach her. The mayor raises a single eyebrow. Huh. Quite fast, isn't she? Lois continues up the staircase and down the hallway to her and Clark's room. She slams the door behind her before kneeling down to the bed and reaching for her safe. She jams the buttons on the keypad and Mr. Martinez jumps through the floorboards. He sees the small safe open and asks, why does the wife of Superman need a gun? Lois pulls out an all-black glove and equips it. This isn't a gun, Mr. Martinez. It's a souvenir. The glove quickly begins to charge, and Lois unleashes a blast of energy directly into Mr. Martinez's chest. The hot plasma energy burns him at the touch and sends him falling back down to the ground. Apparently, they underestimated the woman, he tells the others. The rest of the townspeople attempt to jump through the hole in the ceiling to catch Lois before she can get away. 
But she doesn't stop. She clenches her fist and punches a hole through the second story window before climbing out and jumping off the roof. Lois lands on the ground and runs in the opposite direction of the house. The townspeople try to chase after her, but she is able to keep them at bay with more blasts from the gauntlet. Suddenly, out of nowhere, the Batmobile arrives. The thick tread on its tires tear up her front yard, but that's of little concern at the moment. Lois, at first, believes that it is Batman coming to save her from whatever this is. To her surprise, the doors open and no one is in the passenger seat. Okay, she says as she hops into the car. I guess we're leaving. The door closes behind her and she's bathed in a red light. She looks to her left and right, searching for a way to start the vehicle. If I can drive Frankenstein's scooter, I should be... Voice identified. No ignition match, says the back computer, interrupting her. What the? How do you start this? Lois asks as she grabs onto the wheel. Gauntlet glove, ignition match, driving privileges allowed. Lois cheers as the engine turns back on and the thrusters ignite. At first, Lois believes she has left all the townspeople behind. But it's never that easy. The back computer informs her that there are several bodies converging, requesting permission to initiate shield and weapon systems. Lois grits her teeth and grips onto the wheel. Fire them up. Outside the Batmobile, the townspeople have already caught up. The Batmobile releases a number of rockets that make contact with the majority of them. A few of them are able to dodge the explosives and land on the car before they attempt to break down the windshield. Their assault is cut short when the Batmobile discharges an electric shock to force them off of the vehicle and onto the ground. Lois passes by the Cobb's family farm within a couple of seconds. Her attention is still on getting the help she needs. Request an immediate communication link to the Justice League, she orders the computer. The computer begins to process the request, but out of nowhere, the steering wheel begins to shake. What's happening? She asks as the door to the vehicle is ripped off its hinges. Piece by piece, the Batmobile is being disassembled. Small chunks of metal are thrown into different directions until there is only Lois left. Then, she hears the footsteps as Mr. Cobbs approaches. Hello, Lois, he says grimly. Elsewhere, in Dead Man's Swamp, Superman makes his way into the dilapidated building. It's been hours, he thinks. Miles of corridors right under Hamilton County. There is no sign of Batman. No sign of life. Just a low humming all around. Perhaps it's an aural dampener. Perhaps it's something else. But he cannot turn back now. Superman finds a trap door hidden within the floorboards and removes it. He jumps down the hole and falls for quite a while before he hits the bottom floor. Purple lights illuminate the area and he comes across a door that is seemingly not of this world. Behind the door, he finds Batman, Damien, and a number of others trapped in stasis pods. Each of the pods are hooked up to some kind of alien machine, discharging a viscous black liquid. What is happening? 
he thinks. <laughs>